Okay, yeah, yeah, actually, um, well, my name is Gustavo Silva. Um, this, this conference is, is, uh, is very special to me because uh, in 2017 was the first time I gave a, um, a public uh, presentation in, a, in, and I never given a presentation in my native language, so uh, every time is challenging. So this is my third consecutive year at this conference. And, um, and well, I, I'm a newbie. <laughs> I, I started working in the, in the Kenya community in 2017, in May 2017. So I don't know how many people here uh, started working in the kernel uh, that year or after that year. You can raise your hands. OK, two, one. OK, one, yeah, I'm, I'm a newbie. Um, yeah, this this presentation. Um, the idea of this of this talk is to serve two main purposes. One of them is um, is going to be a sort of a report on all of the things I have been working on in the current community. And the other purpose I I would like to 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 be is to serve as uh, as a motivation for for new people, for newcomers, uh, on how to approach the community and how to start contributing uh, some commits and, and that your, your work uh, uh, is, uh, becomes valuable and, and, and meaningful for you and for the kernel community. So, okay. A little bit about me. Um, who am I? Well, I have a background in embedded systems. Prior to start contributing to the kernel, I had uh, eight years of experience working developing embedded systems uh, in particular, using real-time operating systems and embedded Linux. Uh, I am also a volunteer, and I, I am part of the board of directors at uh, Kids on Computers. Uh, Kids on Computers is a non-profit organization. Uh, we are dedicated to provide free computers and open source uh, to people around the world in communities where they don't have access to technology, uh, in particular to elementary schools. So we give them uh, free computers, we set up the lab, we, we train the teachers on site. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great project. If you happen to have a, a laptop uh, that uh, is old and still functional, and you want to donate it, uh, talk to me. Um, <laughs> this is a funny one. Uh, I, I have been approached uh, by people in the mailing list uh, in private emails in Portuguese. Uh, and also at conferences, I've been told that uh, people think I, I'm, I'm from Brazil. Um, so I, I reply saying that, well, I'm sorry, I don't speak Portuguese. I love to speak Portuguese in many other languages, but unfortunately, I, I don't. Uh, so, so no, I don't, I don't speak Portuguese. Okay, uh, the, the agenda for this presentation. I just started working uh, fixing community issues. So I'm going to talk a little bit briefly about Coveri. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, some bugs I have found uh, just to um, exemplify some, some common cases, some common mistakes people um, uh, make. And some ancient bugs, some years old bugs I have found and I still find them. And a little bit about beyond uh, merely bug fixing and uh, my involvement in the, in the kernel cell protection project. Then, of course, uh, it's, it's a most topic, uh, the MPC fall through. Uh, it is finally uh, globally enabled upstream. So, well, that, it, it was a, a work of, of almost two years. And uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting topic, superpowers and responsibility. Uh, the results, we are going to see basically numbers and um, contributions. And if we have time, uh, a bonus topic uh, at the end, which is a surprise. Okay, well, query, well, it's a static code analyzer. It, it spits tons of false positives. Uh, it's the same issue we, we have with uh, all static code analyzers. Um, although it's, it's it's been pretty useful. Uh, I've been managed to uh, address more than 500 issues uh, in the kernel um, using Coverity. So I remember the last year, someone in the audience uh, commented that they he, he somehow managed to 
to to get zero fall through. Uh, I'm sorry, zero uh, false positives from Coverini. And I don't know if he's here. Uh, anyways, I, I was impressed. Uh, and, and then he went on to say that uh, the way he did it was to instrument uh, his code. So, well, that's something uh, that is not going to happen in the kernel, right? So we're not going to instrument the kernel just to satisfy a particular tool or to silence a particular tool. So uh, the, the false positives is a problem because uh, it, it demands a lot of time uh, trying to find if uh, we are, if I am dealing with a with a false positive or is an actual an actual bug. Um, yeah, uh, th these are the the three uh, categories of high impact issues that Covey reports. Uh, of course, illegal accesses and uh, out of bounds accesses are are are, are uh, of high impact, right? Resource leaks, of course, and uninitialized variables. Uh, these three are very common problems in the in the kernel. So um, right now, I guess we are at a rate of uh, almost nine changes per hour, uh, uh, twenty four seven. Right. So so it is it is absolutely true that uh, we are at the same time that we are implementing new functionalities, uh, we are adding new bugs every day. So uh, there were many sessions in the at, at Plumbers a couple of weeks ago in Lisbon, where this problem was was addressed in a variety of, of, of ways. So um, it's it's, a, it's an absolute reality. Uh, medium impact issues, uh, null pointer, the references they still happening a lot. Inter handling issues, uh, by shift operations. Bad base shift operations, uh, control flow issues, those are medium impact issues. Uh, now, um, my creative work, I, I just started, well, uh, my task was to, to take a look into every, every, every issue Kuwaiti reports, right? So at the very beginning, I had only access to Kuwaiti scans on mainline. So these were scans that uh, were run uh, uh, at every every uh, release candidate. Every time Linux re uh, release a uh, release candidate, uh, then this tool uh, ran a, a scan, and, and I had this report, and well, I, I had to, to solve as much issues as possible. Uh, now, uh, recently, uh, that has changed a little bit. Now, uh, I have access to daily community scans, so the idea of the daily community scans is that we can fix, we can detect and fix issues in Linux Next before they, they hit mainline, right? So that's, that's the ideal scenario. And that's why it's, it's so important Linux Next. And uh, although it is still happening that, that um, some patches are sent directly to Linux and they never show up, they never appear in Linux Next, and that's a problem because sometimes those patches that are supposed to fix something, they are at the same time introducing new bugs. So that, that's an issue that was also uh, discussed uh, at, at the maintainer summit. But I don't think uh, uh, we, we actually had uh, any resolution about it. So I, I guess that's something we have to live with uh, for a while. I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to show you some, some of the bugs. Um, I have chosen these bugs because I, I think they are illustrative in a way that uh, mm, you can see how, how, how common uh, these bugs are and, and they are being introduced uh, in a weekly basis uh, almost. Mm, this is the first one. Uh, okay, this is the commit that introduced uh, the bug. Uh, you can see there was a change, an increment, uh, a change from 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 10 to 1,000 in the in the while in the while uh, condition. Um, th this is this is the commit, and this is the the fix. The problem was the type of the variable, right? So uh, originally uh, counter. 
good, per good perfectly uh, whole uh, values uh, from 0 to uh, 255. So the while condition, the while counter uh, less than 10 uh, could be true or false, right? But under this new condition, well, this while, this condition is, is always true, right? So there is no point on, on, on actually having a while if that's going to be the condition uh, every time. So yeah, this, um, we have this, this, um, this variable type of unsigned integer 8 bits. That's the range of values uh, a variable of this type can, can hold. This condition is always true. That's the bug. The solution, but simple. I mean, uh, in many cases, you're going to see that, that the solution is, is trivial, right? It's, you, you see the code, uh, and it's almost, uh, you immediately know what what's, is it's intuitive, what is the solution, right? But, uh, but that's something people that introduce these bugs don't usually think about. So this illustrates how, how easy and how simple it is to introduce a bug in the, in the kernel, right? You change a line of code and you introduce a bug. You, you don't actually need to do uh, to, to start with, to, to refactor a lot of code or to implement a new driver. Uh, it's that simple. And now under the new condition, well, now the oh my god, you cannot see this. Okay, this uh, okay. I'm showing uh, I'm showing something else here. Okay, let's see. Okay. This is another another very common common issue, a very another very common problem in the in the kernel. This is the commit that introduced the the bug. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is an inconsistency between between uh, the is error and the PTR uh, error uh, macro, right? So the issue here is that that variable is different to the one we are. Can, can you hear me right? I'm having problems with the mic. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's the issue, right? I mean, mm, those, those variables are different, and, and then they're supposed to be the same. So yeah, that's, that was the, the immediate solution to that, to that problem. And yeah, that's the fix. Okay. Um, do you also use tools like Coxinel to find patterns like this in the kernel code, which does not get exercised by static code analysis tools? Yeah, actually, <laughs> that thing that you you cannot see, <laughs> I have a. It says easily code using Coxinel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. I use Coxinel for this. There is actually a script already in the in the code base. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there is actually a script uh, in the code base that um, that can be used to detect this these sort of issues. Although Kobe, they also also report this because it reports an inc that inconsistency, right? And um, what else? Yeah, uh, later on uh, in the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how people is uh, well, I guess. Sometimes failing at using the infrastructure we're, we already have in the kernel to detect bugs, as is the case of Coxinel. So later on in the presentation. Okay, this one, I, I like this example because, um, yeah, the issue here is that we have a potential integer overflow, right? So in reality, maybe we are not at risk of having a, an integer overflow. But this illustrates um, how 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 easily it is for people to uh, to misuse the a cast. Uh, in this example, in the original code, we have this expression. We have these variables: target pigs uh, multiplied by ref divider multiplied by post di divider. All of those variables are of type uh, of on integer unsigned integer of 32 bits. The issue with this is that the expression in that case is going to be evaluated uh, using a, a 32 bit arithmetic. So that cast, it actually doesn't work. I mean, we can have a, an overflow 
and that gas is, is useless. So, so the solution here is cast any of the, of the variables to, to unsign it uh, into your 64 bits, and then the whole expression is going to be evaluated using a 64-bit arithmetic. Uh, so I think this example is very uh, illustrative. Okay, and um, uh, use after free. Th this is also pretty common, uh, in particular when, when using this uh, these macros, the is error and, and pointer error. Uh, yeah, that um, the, the originally the code is is freeing uh, the rule the rule pointer, and then we are accessing it, right? So so that's that's not good. So. Yeah, the solution is, is simple, right? We have to declare a new variable. We have to to uh, to, to store this value previous to uh, to free the, the the pointer, and that's it, right? But that's pretty common. I mean, this 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 type of issues are are, are very common in the kernel. Okay, this one uh, a bitwise operator, yeah. Um, yeah, this is an, an easy one, but uh, but this is not that common. But uh, well, I just like the example. <laughs> okay, this is simple. Uh, in that expression, the use of the bitwise or operator always leads to to true, right? So yeah, in this case, the bug was fixed uh, four days after it was introduced in Linux Next. So it never hit mainline. So that was a good thing. And a missing return. OK, um, I'm going to talk later on. I'm going to, to talk uh, in more detail about my work on the implicit fall through flag. And while working on this, uh, I had to audit a lot of code. I mean, I had to audit. Every 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 piece of code that uh, that reported a, a warning, right? So in this case, uh, I found out that there was not a missing break; it was a missing return instead, and we had also missing continuous even. Resource leaks, yeah, they are very common, and in this case. Okay, that's that's the commit. That's the the, um, the commit log. It is it is very very common for people to uh, implement a new change, add a new uh, add a new piece of code, add a new uh, allocation, memory allocation, after an, a previous allocation, and then completely ignore that in the case the previous allocation. Um, was successful, uh, and if they return immediately after failing the, 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 the allocation they, they just introduced, we are going to, to have a leak, right? So in this case, that's what, that's what happened in the, in the original code. Here, uh, the, um, there, is a, there is a return in the middle of, uh, of some allocations. We, we cannot see it here, but uh, in, in, the code, in the code above, there are some, some allocations, in particular, well, the allocation for, for both and, and for the paths variable. So, so yeah, that's the solution. Just uh, store the, the minus one in a variable and then jump to, to the out label where all those uh, um, variables are going to be deallocated. Uh, all those resources that we had previously allocated uh, are going to be released. OK, now some, some very old bugs I found. This one, um, how, how, how old do you think this, this bug was when I, when I found it? I mean, in, in years? Five years? Seven years old. Yeah, this, uh, this is a very ancient uh, bug. And this is where comes to place Coxinel. I mean, I found this bug uh, merely by happenstance. I was, I don't know, I was boring. I don't know what was. I was just uh, running Coxinel scripts trying to catch something, and I caught this one. I was, well, 
that's that's impressive. I mean, it's impressive that no one in seven years uh, actually um, run the script, right? Yeah, I mean, we found a bug in the test. So basically, yeah, the question is, what was it testing? And if it always passed, people probably, like I said, people, do people test our tests? <laughs> yeah. So thank you at least for fixing a test. Yeah, and this is another one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know you know what's the issue that, right? Uh, there, I mean, uh, we, we are mixing Boolean operators with bitwise uh, operators. So, so yeah, so, so how old do you think this, this book was when I first found it? In years, of course. Over, over 10. Okay. <laughs> hey, <you saw. laughs> I'll repeat what Merrick just said. It was over 10 because it looks like ancient hardware. So no one's running this anyway. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this is a, a this was an eight year eight year old bug when I first found it, and, um, and yeah, it was. Oh, and another thing I, I didn't tell you at the beginning of the of the, of the presentation is that I use I use Twitter a lot, uh, in particular to um, to document my work in the kernel. So I use Twitter exclusively for for kernel stuff. So I couldn't help but uh, tweet about this. So that was the reply I got. So yeah, it's likely, yeah. <laughs> oh. one, one question I had is, have you ever looked at uh, uh, bugs in drivers versus bugs in core kernel? Like how many, how many core kernel bugs have you found uh, in, in relation to drivers? I, I don't have that data because um, Coherity doesn't actually organize the, the, the issues it founds by drivers or core kernel. I mean, it, it is all a mess, right? So sometimes uh, I just say, okay, let's, let's first go for the more common ones. Okay, resource leaks. And it happened to be in a driver. Sometimes it happens to be in a, in a core code. So. Right. It just feels like a, a, in a distribution, you look at this from a statistical distribution, I'd expect to be a lot of bugs in the drivers and a lot less bugs in, in core code. But maybe I'm totally mistaken, it's just me too. No, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, prob probabilistically, that's correct, right? Yeah. Well, uh, Julia Lawal, for a, a few years ago, made some statistics about that, and we all had the feeling there were more uh, bugs in drivers, but her numbers were not so much well. proving that. That was a bit of a surprise to me, I still recall that. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now beyond bug fixing. Um, and this is where I started, um, yeah, getting involved in the kernel self protection project. Uh, my work, uh, my collaboration with the kernel self protection project has been uh, removing variable length arrays. Um, we also have this new struct size helper that actually has helped me to, to find some interesting bugs I'm going to show you um, later on. And, and of course, the, the, the fall through markings, right, which is, uh, was, was partly a nightmare. <laughs> okay, now, variable length arrays. Well, they are not good, they, they exhaust the, the stack. And they even jump over, over guard, guard pages, right? So, and then they write to, to things following it. And well, they are easily find. Uh, they are easily to find with the VLA um, flag. And yeah, they they are finally eradicated from the kernel, and that was uh, um, a huge a huge work of collaboration. Many people uh, besides me and Case were involved in this. So yay. Uh, defense in the defense defense in depth stroke size. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about this new stroke size helper. Okay, this is the, the code that, that we have in, in, in the overflow header. That's the that's the definition of the stroke size helper. And 
it basically tells that it's going to be useful for us when we, we want to, to, to calculate the, the, the amount of memory we need for, for a structure, following by an array member, uh, plus a number of elements, right? So that's, uh, that's a very common piece of code in the kernel. Uh, Case implemented a coxinal script to catch many of these of these instances uh, when where they were happening in in in, in the in the in the allocation functions right KC alloc and alloc and this is an example of a recent a recent commit a recent patch I sent to. Uh, to actually use the struct size helper. So, so yeah, you can see in the description a little bit more about the idea behind this, this struct size helper. So yeah, it's, it's one of the more common cases for allocation size calculations. And, um, and that structure is, is, the, is, a common, is a common case, is a common instance. We have a structure, and inside that structure, we are going to have this uh, zero size uh, array of another uh, structure type, and we want to calculate the the total amount of memory we need to to allocate this. Question? Yeah. Can we, can we like rename that to struct size with tail array? I, I knew, I knew, I knew that was going to to <laughs> that question was coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Some some people have have commented this before in in the mailing list. You? you really? Oh yeah, yeah. You? Yeah, actually, you're Goffman. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. That's a whole topic, right? I mean, naming APIs. That that's a whole that's a whole topic. Okay. Well, I found I found this uh, this instance of of the code using another coxinal script. I I took the one case wrote the one the one case first implemented and i and i added uh, new new code in order to catch uh, a broader uh, range of instances and there are many and this is the this is the code so there is the the allocation and that's basically how the how this stroke size is is supposed to be used and now uh, I, I have seen new code introduced to the code base, and they are already using, people are already uh, using this stroke size helper when they need it in, in these cases, right? So that's, that's a great thing, that's a good thing. Okay, this is just, just an example now. I'm going to show you that one day I was also, I guess I was boring, I don't know, and I found something interesting. I found this, um, this patch from Julia, and yeah, uh, the, the description, uh, it is fixing a, bu a buffer overflow, and it also uh, points out which is the commit that introduced the bug, and yeah, that's the, yeah, this, the, this is fixing a, a buffer overflow. So now let's take a look at the commit uh, Julia mentions in the, in the commit log. We're going to get back to this one soon. Okay, this is the this is the commit that introduced the the bug. You see, there was a change in the in the type of the uh, of the structure, in the type of variable. This uh, this path was previously it was of type a stroke ACPI, DM AR. Now the new type is a new structure actually. So let's take a look at this, at the previous structure. This is the, the old one, right? If you see the new one there in green, there is a, there is a new extra field, uh, the, the, bus, the, bus, the bus variable. So that's actually the difference between these two, both, uh, these two uh, structures. And now, if you see in the code um, at the top, that's actually where where the where the bug happens, right? We are trying to access a new field that it's actually not in this structure. 
you see? So originally, we, uh, the people that introduced this code, uh, they never uh, updated this line of code. So that's where, where the overflow happens. So yeah, that was the, the, uh, the, the right change. That was the, the, the right way to fix it. And this illustrates that uh, it's, it's really dangerous to, to use uh, this, this time of code, right? I mean, uh, the size of and with the, with the name of the structure is not a good idea. And this was a four-year-old bug, actually. So then what I did was, OK, now that I, uh, I knew about this, this instance, well, I just sent a patch, right? And this actually could have been prevented since the beginning by using uh, the struct size helper, right? Which, of course, uh, didn't exist at that time. But that's one of the things we, we want to, to prevent uh, with the use of this new helper. And then this other one, yeah. I found this uh, this issue while also trying to trying to do some transformations using the stroke size helper. Uh, yeah, the, the commit log uh, describes the, the issue uh, accurately. So the problem here is that uh, we have this zero size array, let's say in the middle of the structure, and whenever this happen to be in the middle of the structure, not at the last in the structure, uh, we have an undefined behavior, right? So the right way to do this is first to move it to the last place in the structure. And also the recommended way is not, the recommended way is, is using uh, this mechanism, a variable length uh, member instead of a zero size member. And the kernel is full of these cases. It's full of zero size uh, uh, members. Um, yeah, how, how old do you think this bug was when I first found it? In years, of course. Eight years. I mean, above five is just <laughs> this is scary, right? Yeah, it was an eight years old bug. And of course, the, the bug is, uh, has now been backported all the way down to, to long-term support 3.16. So that's another of the benefits uh, of, uh, of, of, of trying to, to, to promote the use of the stroke size helper, right? That every now and then, I run into some issues that, uh, some ancient issues. OK, now let's talk a little bit about the, the fall-through markings. OK, now they have a common weakness enumeration. And this is the description. I mean, basically, it says that uh, we got to be careful. Uh, we might forget a, a place in a break. And sometimes it is a return. Sometimes it is even a continue. It's prone to error, of course. And this is what uh, Chris Peterson told me via Twitter. Uh, yeah, that he, he actually had to annotate more than 200 uh, intentional fall-throughs in, in Firefox. So other people in other projects were already using this flag. So, so we, we want to use it too. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about this flag. This is uh, the, the warning, the, the common warning uh, GCC reports every time it finds uh, this issue. So in this case, uh, it was a false positive, and all that I had to do was to add this fall through marking, right? And, and that's it. This is, this is just to illustrate uh, how to fix this warning whenever it is a false positive. You just add a fall through warning, and that's it. But uh, the, the thing. The interesting uh, part is to actually determine when we are dealing with a false positive or an actual bug. So at the beginning, uh, there, there were like uh, more than 2,000 uh, warnings just in x86 when I started working on this. So I had to audit 
every one of those. I mean, in many cases, it was just obvious that the, that the solution was to add a fourth marking. But anyways, I had to take a look at the code. In some cases, of course, I, I was wrong, and, uh, and, and I was corrected by the maintainers, and I appreciate that. And some people even, uh, a couple of people suggested that uh, why don't I just uh, write a coxin script and place the fall through markings uh, all across the kernel, and that's it. Uh, but that, that, that idea suppose that I know exactly that all of those warnings are false positives and that uh, we don't have any other bug uh, here and there, right? So unfortunately, that was not the, the right solution. OK, yeah, so as I was telling you, uh, tons of warnings, more than uh, 2,300 just on x86. So, so I was, at the beginning, I was like, okay, so where do I even begin? So, okay, the strategy at the beginning was to, well, I'm going to count the warnings on each file, and I'm going to, to try to address uh, the files that contains uh, most warnings, right? And, and then I noticed that the x86 headers, uh, as, they were using, uh, as they were used everywhere, uh, they contain only, I guess, like 28 uh, of these warnings, but uh, they were multiplied. But uh, they, they, were, they were multiplied uh, for the number of, of files that, that that were used in these headers. So the strategy, I said, well, let's address 86 first, right? So who's the keeper of x86? Exactly. So, <laughs> what possibly go wrong, right? Okay, so I sent my first patch uh, to address these warnings in 2017, and, and, I, and I was really happy. I was like, okay, I'm going to address a bunch of warnings. I'm going to, I'm going to be popular, <laughs> and then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 then I noticed, I realized that that getting a query reply from from Thomas was not particularly a good thing. So I was immediately flamed, right? So yeah, uh, we had some back and forth at that time. I just aborted the mission, <laughs> and I had to retain this the strategy, right? So the happy ending is that those warnings were finally addressed this year. Otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, the, the implicit fall through flag already upstream. OK, so now let's talk a little bit about some uh, unintentional fall through bugs. I'm, I'm sorry, you cannot see the whole, the whole thing there. Yeah, so again, I, I was excited about it, so I had to tweet it, right? So this is the first one that I, well, not the first one, but one of the, of the ancient ones that I found. A 20 year old bug. So, so yeah, that basically the problem was that this, uh, this code was uh, always returning success, even on failure. So yeah, that's, that was the fix, right? So yeah, so this was recently applied to long-term Linux 3.16. Obviously, it had been applied to other multiple um, uh, stable trees also. And Another one, box, box, ancient box. Yeah, this one was introduced in 2012. Yeah, so as simple as just adding a break, right? But we had to take a look at the code and, and, and figure out the solution. So your bug, and it has been applied to multiple stable trees. Yeah, so one day I was, uh, is Gert here? Yeah, right? Is that him? Oh, OK, OK. Well, I, uh, he, yeah, that Friday night, he sent me an email uh, telling me that he was seeing some, some, some warnings in, on, on, H, on, on, on SH, I'm sorry. And um, at that time, I had never built that uh, architecture before. So I downloaded the compiler, and I decided to, to, to try it out. And voila, I found a 10-year-old bug. <laughs> so that was awesome. That I, I, I was really happy with that finding because it was like, uh, I guess, like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. 
and I was still uh, working, and I said, okay, I'm just going to take a look into this and see what I found, and I found that. And this was the solution, right? So you can see the code. Doesn't seem like uh, dangerous, right? <laughs> okay, so that was a dangerous bug, and the bug, uh, the bug fix has been backported and applied to multiple stable trees now. Again, Asian box. Okay, so yeah, so so I was uh, adding this fault through markings here and there, everywhere. And actually, when my first strategy uh, trying to address x86 first failed, I had to I had to, to take a different direction. And what I thought that was that I I was going to to broadcast. <laughs> this this fall through markings, and I was going to to sense how were how well they were received by 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 people, right? So I noticed some people they were more uh, they were more more they, they were more agreeable on this on this on this solution, right? Because there has been a lot of discussion if uh, it is okay to add a fall through markings or if we have to add a, a, an attribute and a directive. Uh, yeah, there, 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 there has been this back and forth uh, in the mailing list. So, so yeah, I, I suddenly noticed that some people, in particular, the the people in the networking people, was actually taking all of my patches. So thanks, Dave. Thanks, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, I just bombarded uh, Dave with with uh, all of the photo markings. So that was the strategy, right? And it worked. Question. Two minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay, so yeah, one day finally uh, it was uh, uh, applied upstream, and I was uh, really happy because that concluded uh, two years of work. I I actually invested like three percent of my time working on this uh, every day, so that's not what I've been doing all the time. So. I've been working now for 28, yeah, no, 29 months as a kernel developer. So, yeah, the 30% of that time I, I invested on working on, on implicit fault markings. It's worth it. Yeah, it's totally worth it. I mean, uh, after this flag was finally applied upstream, uh, one day I, I received an email that I'm going to show you. Uh, and that's when I felt that uh, everything all the work, all the all the sweat, all the back and forth, all the fights with people, all the uh, all this struggle was worth it, and uh, I felt I felt very 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 happy when I received this email. So yeah, basically, um, Jonathan Cameron, you cannot see the. Uh, then you, you can see the, the whole commit log, but it says, okay, this got this got caught by in, by the implicit fall through detection, but is a bug rather than a missing marking. And yeah, and I received a, a, an email from Greg, uh, which is the one that that first got me in, into working in the kernel. So yeah, so I was I was I was really happy. I was actually very very excited. So I just wanted to share this with you. Okay, superpowers and responsibility. Okay, let's go quick. Now I have my own tree. Why do I have my own tree? Because I got stuck at 90% uh, when I was doing this work. Uh, patches were deliberately being ignored. I met this uh, maintainer at a, at a conference the last year, and I asked him directly, so okay, I have sent you this bunch of patches. I have pinged you uh, many times, so what's going on? Case was, all, uh, was also there, and he he told us that he was deliberately uh, ignoring the patches. So we tried to uh, to persuade him to take the patches. Uh, he didn't agree. So unfortunately, we had to, to bypass uh, that people, right? And only in three occasions I had to bypass people. That was the first one. The other one, uh, the patches were actually uh, applied to to someone's tree. And, but they never ever were sent to sent out to, to Linux. So I waited for four months, 
and I had to apply them to my tree, and I had to send a pull request to Linux. In our case, I had this back and forth with the maintainer. Uh, we have a long discussion. Um, he, he didn't know exactly what was the solution, if it, it, it was a bug in his code or it was a false positive. Uh, we had this back and forth. Um, so finally, some people joined the conversation. We agree on a solution. He applied the solution. Then I found another warning in his code that was obviously a full through uh, marking, I mean a false positive. I sent the patch. He replied immediately saying that he was going to apply the patch to his next tree. And, but I got this gut feeling that he was not going to do it. So in that case, I ignored him. I applied the patch to my tree, and I sent a pull request to Linux in the, in the coming in the, um, merge window. And it happened that this guy never applied the patch to his tree. So. Sorry. <laughs> was you? No. <laughs> OK, now, results, contributions. Uh, kernel recipes 2017, I, uh, I had contributed uh, a little bit more than 200 commits. Uh, 2018, a little bit my 750 uh, commits. And now, uh, 1,400. Categories of, of, of box uh, fix, more than 10. Types of issues I have fixed, uh, more than three, uh, 38, including uh, some inspectors. Uh, systems and components impacted, all of this. Stable trees impacted, 20. Uh, my first bug fixes, uh, I sent my first bug fixes during the development cycle of 4.12. Then in, in 4.20, uh, VLAs were finally eradicated from, from the kernel. And finally, in 5.3, the implicit through was globally enabled by default, and I am really, really happy. And thank you. <laughs> OK, yeah, we have no time for the bonus, so it's fine. Uh, I just have a quick question. Why yeah. this? It's common style fall through. Why not have a proper label like they, they Clang supports an attribute, right? Which one? Clang supports an attribute or has an attribute. Yeah, better. yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, Clang doesn't support this uh, this this marking. Yeah, uh, that's that's and we don't have time for for that kind of discussion. <laughs> I'm sorry, but ba basically, basically, it was because uh, some static analyzers were already using this. GCC was already parsing this. I know the, the worrisome history of that, yeah. Yeah, th there is, currently, this is going to be changed. I mean, uh, for sure it's going to be changed because the last thing I heard about case was that during the kernel, during the maintainer summit, uh, Linux agree on using a fall through directive. That's it. So that's what's going to happen. So since you mentioned the strict size uh, macro, uh, I heard some people complaining that there is no comprehensive list of all these macros like bit, chan mask, struct size. There is no what? Sorry. There is no comprehensive Compre list of this stuff, or no. is there? I see. No. <laughs> because like maintainers tell people to use that macro, or that macro, but there is no list of them. Yeah. That, so that, what what is the best practice? That's a common that's a common uh, thing among the the whole kernel, right? I mean, sometimes we have to mark something like deprecated, and people still use it and. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, my suggestion is to check reviews from patches shortly before yours. <laughs> so if, if I get a new driver and I know I don't have the bandwidth to review the driver soon, I tell the people have a look at the drivers I re reviewed recently because there's a kind of kind of likeliness likeliness that some of the things will apply to your drivers too, like using new macros. Obviously. <laughs> I, I think one thing that's interesting, and maybe a, the message is lost in all this, on what an incredibly sophisticated programming environment the Linux kernel actually is. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that was actually in the describe of my, my of my presentation. It's, it's a scary beast. Yeah, even <laughs> even all these like review comments don't contain all those macros, so it, it doesn't really help. Yes, yes, please. J j just one point regarding these macros. I agree with Marek with the lack of uh, a list because when I was uh, doing the backports for some uh, all the stable kernels, regularly I was uh, facing new macros that I didn't know, and it was very hard for me to find the equivalent ones on the older version. I see. Well, thank you guys. <laughs>